A self-imposed deadline is approaching to name a new UCLA football coach. Memo to the Clippers, Paul George is wondering where his extension is. And the new look galaxy thus far have the look of the old look galaxy. No bueno. Good morning. I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and start for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. And this is the Faithful Angelino's Morning Report. So it is February 12, 2024. By the time you get this clip, I'm going to be on a plane heading west, leaving St. Loser Misery and very much looking forward to it. And by the way, side note of something else I'm very much looking forward to, no more Taylor Swift. I don't hate her. I don't even hate the Kansas City Chiefs. But you know why I hate this? Oh, because imagine being a newspaper reporter, right? You busted your hump in high school to get really good grades. Then you racked up six figures of student loan debt because you thought you could get one of the few journalism jobs out there that still existed. You land that gig, you feel happy that you're covering major athletics, and what do they want you to do? They want you to post about Taylor Swift's airplane flight from Tokyo. Oh, will she make it in time for the game? She did, she did. Oh my God, she's chugging a Bud Light. That is what sports journalism has devolved into. So yeah, totally don't need it in my life anymore. Get it out. No more Taylor Swift. No more Taylor Swift. She can marry the dude. I don't care. I'm tired of 34 year old plus women trying to act like they're still 16 years old anyway. Time for everybody to grow up. No more Taylor Swift. Now, if you like being in the know about LA, a real sports town, clickety clack the like button, clickety clack the subscribe button. There's a notification bell, hit that. It'll let you know we drop new content. Sharing is caring, let people know we exist and by all means comment, because I do get back to you. Quick look at the scoreboard. There were no games involving LA teams yesterday. Meanwhile, today, the Clippers are, at Minis uh, the Clippers are hosting Minnesota at 7.30. Norman Powell. We don't know if he's going to play. Saturday, he took an elbow to the face. Blood all over the place. So we'll have to find out how tough the guy really is. Because I'll, I'll be the first to tell you. I damn sure don't want elbows going in my face. Let's get to the news. UCLA Athletic Director Martin Jarman said that he wanted to name a new Bruins football coach. And he listed the time frame. And the time frame suggests that the deadline would be Tuesday. Yeah, he sends out the note. Chip Kelly is gone. He wants to have an answer within 96 hours. So the LA Times is reporting that the UCLA Athletic Department has reached out to more than a dozen candidates to replace Kelly. They also reported three of the names. Nebraska Defensive Coordinator Tony White, Former running backs coach Deshaun Foster, who took a similar job with the Vegas Raiders. Both of those two candidates have ties to UCLA. They played for the program. The third, by the way, Stanford coach Troy Taylor. Two people, by the way, who are not in the running, according to the LA Times, are P.J. Fleck of Minnesota and Brent Brennan of Arizona. Now, you might be asking yourself, why is it this big a deal to name a coach this quickly? Yes, spring ball is coming up that quick, but shouldn't you, I don't know, exercise a little good old fashioned patience, kind of dig things out a little bit, do some, do a lot of in-depth research, background checks. When was the last time you took a background check alone and had it last less than three days. Well, the reason is because now that Kelly is gone, there is a transfer portal opened especially for UCLA players, a 30 day one. So the idea being you would want to have a new coach in place that the players would want to play for. Don't give them the reason to leave. 
But this also comes to a conundrum. Some of the players are obviously there because they want to play for the prestige of playing for UCLA. Maybe they always wanted to play in the Rose Bowl. But a lot of them want to go to the NFL. And Chip Kelly's offense does, in fact, get people into the NFL. So you would want that route to still be available. And if it's not, you're going to split. Now, what does that mean for the people that we know have been contacted by UCLA? Well, the one is that current players had previously expressed support for Foster to get a shot. Secondly, you recall last year, White's, uh, you recall last year that the UCLA defense was extremely effective. Well, White's defense with the Cornhuskers ranked in the top 20 in total defense and scoring D. Now, it's true that Troy Taylor does not have any link to UCLA, but one thing I can tell you is that he ran a very high-tempo offense with the Cardinal, which theoretically you could say is similar to what Kelly ran at UCLA. So the clock is ticking, at least in Jarman's mind. Can UCLA land a new football coach by this time tomorrow? Has anyone else noticed that Paul George still hasn't gotten his extension with the Clippers yet? Whoops. Something to handle because, let's be real, the Clippers are balling and Paul George has played a vital role. He was just named to his ninth All-Star game, scoring more than 22 points a game. And by the way, they already hooked up his teammate, Kawhi Leonard. Now, you might be saying, well, James... What about James Harden? Well, the Clippers can't touch James Harden and offer him an extension until the end of the year. So that means the bullseye to extend falls solely on Paul George, who, by the way, has said he has wanted to stay. And we have no legit idea as to why there's a delay. It's all guesswork. The best guess that I would have, and again, it's a guess, Kawhi Leonard, injury prone. Paul George, injury prone. Do you want to give out two max contracts to players with lengthy histories of missing time? That's risky. But here's the other thing about risk. It's not just risk about whether or not you keep the guy. It's risk about what happens if you let him go. I keep reading articles that say the Philadelphia 76ers want to make a run in him, run at him. Now, I understand that it sounds kind of implausible. After all, you would guess that James Harden is in Paul George's ear every single day, telling him that Philadelphia is a crap hole. And I've been to Philadelphia. It is, in fact, a crap hole. But imagine Paul George in a lineup with Joel Embiid. Now, the scribes on Saturday, they go up to the guy and they ask George for an update. And the only thing he said, quote, and that's the goal, unquote. Not exactly insightful, wouldn't you say? There was a lot of strum and drong with the uh, Galaxy last year. You remember? There was a boycott to try to get rid of the team president. Uh, Dignity Health Sports Park sounded like the inside of a, of a crypt for Pete's sakes for much of the year. Galaxy missed the playoffs for the, like the third time in four years. Massive upheaval in the front office. Players are coming out, players coming in. And so far, they haven't even won a single preseason game. Now, I do understand preseason in MLS is much like preseason Major League Baseball. You're not going to get the starters playing a whole lot of time. I totally understand that. But the Galaxy, it's not just that they're losing. They have been outscored so far 13-3. to 13-3. to three. That's a little bit like roadkill so far. And I do realize that the scoring 
is suspect until they get the players that they've signed. Manager Greg Vanny said that he believes incoming winner Gabriel Peck will be joining the team next week. Okay, great. Totally look forward to it. But even if Gabriel Peck came in for these preseason games and just started lighting it up, you're still thinking to yourself, or at least I'm thinking to myself, that this team is every bit as suspect on the back line as it was last year. And by the way, MLS reporter Mike Gray said that center back Jalen Neal, the starter from last year, is going to be out six to eight weeks with an abdominal injury. So a suspect defense already has an injury problem. And by the way, if you're asking about Neal, if you're saying to yourself, wait, didn't he already have sports hernia surgery last season? Yeah, he did. So not exactly the most optimistic of starts for the five-time MLS Cup champs, wouldn't you say? Hate to be the bearer of bad news, I am in fact a Galaxy fan. But oh boy, give us a reason for optimism, folks. New Houston Astros reliever Josh Hader said the Dodgers were interested but never made an offer. Which means that they weren't really interested at all, pal. You don't have to bring up the Dodgers. You got your contract. Let it go. Because you were the one who asked for $100 million for three outs. I get it. They're the last three outs. People like to know that those last three outs are in the bag. But $100 million? Yeah, I'm okay with that. A Nets reporter tells Laker fans that the Lakers adding Spencer Dinwiddie will ease the pressure on Austin Reeves. Also, that the whole change of scenery, doing good for him stuff might be another benefit for Dinwiddie. But it is not a perfect addition. You might recall Dinwiddie was added via the buyout market. The downside, according to this reporter who saw Dinwiddie play a lot with the Brooklyn Nets, is that after Dinwiddie had his anterior cruciate ligament repaired a couple of years ago, he doesn't attack the rim like he used to. So he's going to be a rotation player and he will be productive. But once again, he's not going to be the savior to the Lakers season. Chris O'Leary, a Notre Dame assistant coach, has left that college in order to join the Chargers coaching staff. O'Leary coached safeties for the football players who claim to be Irish. He actually did get three safeties into the NFL. So the guy apparently has a trick or two up his sleeve that might actually help the uh, Chargers defense this season. But you let me know what you think of the comments thread. Do you believe a Tuesday deadline is smart for UCLA? And if so, do any of those three candidates float your boat? Why do you believe Paul George hasn't been given a contract extension with the Clippers? And are you a little weirded out by the Galaxy preseason so far? If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We're talking LA sports every single day here. Thank you for watching. I'm James. We'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Corte El Queso production. Take care.